It's the moment you've all been waiting for. No, it's not the van tour. It's how much did this van cost us to convert? That is not the tune of our song. We don't have a song. I'm just letting you roll with this. Alright then, so it has been eight months since we officially moved into the van, so that's eight months since the van build officially ended. And now we've had plenty of time to continue tinkering on the van and spending money on the van, so we're putting an end to it. <laughs> Not the spending, but we're, we're, we're saying... <laughs> That this is the end of the van build and we're going to now do all of the costs up until this yep. point on how much it costs us to convert this van yep. from the start all the way to the end, including the cost of buying the van in the yep. first place. Because the most popular question that we get asked, or one of them, is obviously how much does it cost to convert a van? And I'm sure you're tired of hearing the answer, you know, it's, uh, well, how long is a piece of string? Let's get the big one out of the way. The van itself. Yes. So there's going to be a total with obviously without the van uh, cost and then a total with the, the van cost. The van cost us eight thousand three hundred. One hundred. Did it? I've got this wrong then. <laughs> okay. The van cost us eight thousand one hundred, and this was in July of two thousand nineteen. So before the events of the world happened. Yes. Yeah, so that that's like a dirt <laughs> cheap van now. Uh, it probably doesn't have an engine, so. That is the first biggest change from 2019 when we bought the van and no. 2022. Yeah, and uh, I pause the video here. I'll put the specs of the van that we bought, our van here, Melanie, on the screen now so you can check the miles and all mm -hmm. of that. If you wanted to, a van of this sort of spec now, if we were to look for this sort of van now. 15 or 20? Between 15 and 20. Yeah thousand pounds is what you're looking at seriously in 2021 when prices went skyrocketing um sam put the van in uh, we buy any car yeah which basically gives you the worst rate yeah. on buying any vehicles literally you need to offload a vehicle mm. tomorrow and if we were if we were to sell the van as a van at that point not as a camper van we would have made money that's on how, that sale that's how crazy the van prices have so that's that, that that's that so so yeah you're all, you're all, we're all buggered essentially <laughs> from this point on yeah. so the van cost us 8100 that was back in 2019 by the way the laptop's down here so if we're just looking <laughs> down or one of us is very fo really focused at least the laptop because there's lots of numbers we have broken the van build into its key sections so there's uh, electric seating plumbing blah 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 we'll go through them um so electrics for electrics we spend Three thousand eight hundred and seventy-two. That's Correct. very specific. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and I have my Excel table. I added everything up. That's what it came to. The biggest part of all the electrics was uh, all the boxes. So that's the batteries, the MPPT, the DC DC, the solar panels, uh, the all. AC charger, the Bluetooth tracker for the batteries, the inverter. Basically, everything that's under what we're sitting on. Everything right now. that's not cable or eyelids or little bits and pieces I think uh, so all of those things uh, that was the main part of it it was three thousand and two pounds <laughs> <laughs> and our electrical specs I'll put on the screen as well so yeah. you can see what we bought do we regret spending three thousand pounds on our electrical system the answer is no in actual fact we wish we kind of put more batteries in the van at that initial period mm -hmm. but number one lithium batteries were much more expensive then than they are now in terms of for good batteries. You can find batteries of our spec for half the price they are now. So that's number one. Uh, and number two, we didn't know at the beginning how much we would rely on electrics for things like cooking at the very beginning. So £3,000 is what we spent and the electrical system does us for what we need to do. As for the rest of it, it's £200 on cable and conduit and £670 on other electrical, so that's fuse boxes, um, light switches, other little bits and pieces that go with doing your electrics up. Yeah, all the connectors, all the... Eyelets. Yeah, all there's, those pesky things. Yeah, there's all, all the things that you can never find when you research them, because <laughs> there's a difference how they're called in America versus how they call it in Canada, UK, Australia, New Zealand. All of them have different names. It's annoying. Indeed. Anyway. Um, yeah. 
So that's for it for us. I feel like this video is not just us um, telling you how much we spent on the van, it's also us venting about the whole process. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. So the next category we're going to go over is our heating system. So if you don't already know, go watch our playlist if you haven't already, we've got a hydronic diesel heating system in our van. We bought an Eberspreker one because we were really worried about the Chinese ones and didn't want to deal with any of that. So we went with a really expensive one that has a warranty so that if it breaks, we can repair it. And I know you, you all have an opinion on this. And that's fine. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> But all in all, our entire heating system cost £1,975. The majority of that, £1,643, was the heating kit itself. So that was the heater, the air matrix, the heat exchanger, and all the like the little fuel pump, fuel line. So aside from the actual heater, we've also spent another £332 on what I've put here is pipes, clips, fuel tanks, valves, bits and pieces. So that's everything that we built under the couch to connect the whole system together. So I think um, yeah. bar getting a uh, cheaper um, hydronic heater, this is kind of uh, a dirt cheap hydronic <laughs> system because frankly it should probably have more valves, it should be better plumbed, uh, kind of more sophisticated yeah. plumbed. Uh, we know people now who are attempting these uh, hydronic heating systems and they send us their diagrams and like whoa that's cool and that's so much more than I did um, so uh, obviously so, so this is like kind of the base price for this sort of uh, sort of system bar the price of the hydronic heater which you can probably score a cheaper Chinese one if you're lucky that it works or what you can do is you can actually go on eBay and just go and buy basically engine preheaters that have come off old Land Rovers or whatever for 99 pence Alex and basically use one of those instead they will probably work for who knows how long, but there we go. I should also say that this includes the pipe for the underfloor heating system, the yeah. coolant that's in the system, um, and all of that as well. Yeah. So but obviously the coolant uh, needs to be maybe topped up occasionally, so that, that's not kind of included in, but that's not much. So. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, our heating system, just shy of £2,000, one nine which is, seven five. Which is comparable to you actually getting a Truma system, like a combi boiler or things like that. Yeah. Because this system technically has the capability to both heat the air, the floor and the water. Now, we're going to talk about the plumbing now, um, <laughs> uh, but our shower is still not plumbed in. So there's still some piping expenses that are still not in here, but I'm hoping it's not going to be more than like 100, 150 on top of this. Oh, you hope. You hope. We can make it cheaper. The, the, the whole, you know, turn a knob, press a button, shower um, thing has not been done yet. We, we're still doing the camping shower uh, thing, but the heat exchanger is ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> it's sitting there waiting so, for like a year and a half, just going under the couch going, please use me at some point, please use me. It's a lot of work and I'm taking a holiday. So speaking of plumbing, the plumbing cost us £447. That includes the water tank, uh, our 25 litre water tank that we use in the sink, the hoses, the, to the toilet plumbing, which... Uh, toilet plumbing? Yeah, you know, the tank for the toilet, the number two box, all the pipes the in the toilet, the bucket, yes. You could find that plumbing, plumbing, but it's dry plumbing. Dry plumbing. Okay, um, so apparently a composting toilet is in the plumbing category. <laughs> um, drain, sink, uh, is it tanking stuff here? Yep. Oh, the, uh, the yep. shower tanking, all the tiles and bits and pieces. The second lot of tiles? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, I don't know, you put the composting toilet there, I don't know what, what else it involves. Yes, yeah, so the plumbing basically involves all the water pipe work and then everything that went into building the shower compartment, yeah. minus the actual plumbing of the shower, which aforementioned has not been done yet. Yes, obviously the sink, that, that tab, the foot pump, all of that folds in, into this. Our plumbing expenditure is quite low compared to a lot of people's and that's mostly because we don't have like a Sherflow pump or an accumulator. We don't actually have giant water tanks that are mounted mm -hmm. either under the van or under a cupboard somewhere. We've actually got quite a simple plumbing system, a foot pump, a very simple tap, things like that. So that's kind of why our plumbing system is cheaper than most because you, you, you can, can actually pay £447 for custom water tanks let alone any of the other piping. As this probably shows, plumbing is sort of our least favourite part of, of, of the van build because, um, I don't know, water always leaks, it's annoying, creates havoc. We'll, we'll get to tinkering with it more later. Whew, the next section is a whopper. Materials. Mm. 
it's a lot of stuff in it. Um, yeah. Materials that includes everything from wood screws, metalwork, spray sealant, all of that <laughs> came to four thousand one hundred and two pounds. And I've actually broken this down into quite a few different sections so we can go through each of those individually. So I'm just going to run through each one. So first of all we've got wood and plywood, anything made of wood. Spent £926 on wood. Then screws, brackets and bolts have their own category <laughs> of 184 because you never have the right screws and you have to always have to buy new ones. Yeah. Then we've got £504 on all the metalwork, so that's buying all the aluminium, the Unistrut and any of the big metal joinery like the stuff that's on the roof, holding the solar panels and the deck together. Then the insulation, that includes the Reflectix, aluminium uh, foil, PRR board, fluffy plastic insulation, that's £407. Then we've got £136 on the van paint and the rollers, so that's no paint on the inside, that's us painting the van from yep. silver to blue on the outside. Yeah, with military vehicle paint. Yep. Because I know everybody asks. Then £761 on, um, this is a weird category, side windows, couch foam, uh, lagoon table and hanging chair and those sort of bits. I don't know what kind of category this is. I didn't know how to categorise them. Something that we bought but didn't build ourselves, I suppose, this is the category because we didn't cast the windows <laughs> or any of that. Then we spent £234 on what I'm going to call sprays. So trim fix, spray glue, rust protection paint, spray paint, anything in a spray can. £234. And I will say nearly half of that is trim fix. Trim fix yeah. Spray adhesive. You always need more than you think. Buy a pack of 12 and you'll be good. And then the other is everything else which includes uh, rope string Rail, hooks, bits, latches, sealants, tapes, glues, and Velcro. Um, that was £1,124. I really tried to categorise that more, but honestly, I, I £1,000 still... on bits. I still cannot understand how all of this went into this van and we still have space for us. <laughs> I have no idea. And it was like, it was just absorbing more and more. It's like two years on, there's still still space to stuff things in. More Velcro, more glue, more fabric to put on. It's crazy. I don't know how it sucks <laughs> up so much thing of money. It's incredible. Uh, anyway, that's the materials section. The thing that I would say about the materials section is that one of the most important things that probably has changed price is the wood. Uh -huh. We bought the majority of our wood, majority of the plywood for the walls, the ceiling, that's the three mil lightweight wood, uh, and most of the CLS timber in 2020 when wood prices were still somewhat stable. And now if we were to buy that wood again, I calculated it would be double the cost. So it's a pretty significant change and something to consider when you're planning your van build. Yeah. So that's why we're mentioning all of these changes because uh, obviously you, you may want to use this information to try and budget your van build. Yeah. And some of these have changed just like the van and the wood are really big sections. Yeah. Um, uh, but on the plus side, you can get more lithium batteries for the same price that we did. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for the next section, which is appliances, we spent 1530 37 pounds. Um, that includes everything from skylight. By the way, skylight and windows are in different places. How does that make sense? I don't know. Okay, so our appliances, our skylight, fridge, which is actually an appliance, swivel seat and cooking appliances, um, uh, that amounted to one and a half grand. Yeah, and half of that cost was the 12 volt fridge. I'm gonna keep saying this in every single video that I can. <laughs> Do not buy a 12 volt fridge. It is a ripoff. They may be efficient, okay, but their quality is crap. Okay, the I... plastic just keeps breaking. If you spend a grand on a fridge, they, sh they, they should be made of something better than plastic that cracks at the tiniest nudge. Anyway, buy a hundred pound on. fridge. Buy a £100 AC fridge and buy a cheap inverter. And replace that 10 times and you're still better off than buying a 12 volt fridge. Anyway. What classifies as, as an appliance? It's a little bit ambiguous. It was. This section didn't have many things in. I guess you could bundle it in with materials. Yeah. But yeah, anyway. The, the cooking appliances uh, was actually going to be a whole video on the things in our kitchen because that was requested by um, some of you. So 
we won't go that deep into it, but we don't have a normal oven, so that doesn't include like a Tedford oven because we do not have LPG, we're all diesel powered or electric powered. But the kitchen appliances that essentially that includes are the two little induction hobs that we have from mm -hmm. Van Gogh, which are brilliant. Then we've got a camping gas pizza stove, we've got a dual burner gas hob, we've got a Ramosca, which is electric, mm -hmm. we've got a toaster, and we've got a waffle maker. Yeah, the, the waffle maker is not in this because that was a wedding gift. The next section we've got is called decor. So we spent £865 on decor and that includes basically finishing touches as I like to think. So anything that we went into the store and went that will be nice in the van, let's buy that. <laughs> it also includes things like all the fabrics that we made the curtains out of and plastered the couch in, the fake plants that we have dotted around everywhere. Yeah, it includes also the vinyl on the floor, which, by the way, does not work with our underfloor heating, has to be replaced. But that's like, you know, plumbing the shower, it will be done when, when it gets done. done. <laughs> it also includes all the paint that we use on the inside of the van, so all the white paint on the walls, all the blue paint on all the furniture bits, uh, and then other little bits and pieces, basically visual aesthetics. Mm -hmm. It also includes all those trips to Ikea that we did to buy the storage boxes and a lot of a lot of stuff in here is from IKEA. I know. If the, we didn't the, build it, really nice. That's if, really nice. If we didn't build it, it's from IKEA. I think most of the time. I mean, some some of them are from Amazon, just random ones. But yeah, most of them. Yeah. The next section is a bit subjective, which is tools. Um, how much you spend on tools, it's purely dependent on what tools you you already you already have. You may have uh, somebody you know, like. You know, your dad or your grandfather who's collected tools since the, the dawn of time um, and you don't need to really buy anything. Uh, for us it was kind of um, I would say, a mix. I would so, say a mix, yeah. Yeah, so we had a lot of tools but we did buy a bunch as well. Uh, so we spent £783 on tools. And I would say a third of that was a table saw which I definitely would recommend getting one or renting one or find someone who has one make them a cup of tea and beg them to use it cook them roast roast usually works <laughs> payment yeah and then this also includes any hand tools that we bought so all those uh, allen keys and mm -hmm. screwdriver bits it also included things like jigsaw blades mm -hmm. uh, saw blades other things like that we also did buy uh, battery powered tools to carry with us in the van now yeah, which are super here. helpful yeah um but yeah, we already had quite a few tools lying around that we could use. I think we could have easily halved that cost if we honestly just... If we hadn't gotten the table saw, but I love the table saw. Cause, I love the table saw. Because, um, you know, it's hard to cut straight and nothing's straight in the van. So at least the table saw gives you the <laughs> illusion that things are straight. Indeed. But some people manage to do amazing things just with a, a jigsaw and a screwdriver, you know, even even sometimes <laughs> non-powered tools. So none of this is like a necessity. It's just yeah. what you would prefer to work with. Actually, none of this list, the whole video is not a necessity. <laughs> you can do it completely for free if you use recycled materials or this or that. There's plenty of ways you can do it differently. Or you can spend 100k on, 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 on the van build without buying the van and that's <laughs> fair play usually you get pretty cool vans with nice sophisticated underfloor heating and 2000 amp hours of lithium batteries and a whole solar roof deck that you can walk on and that tilts can... with the sun based upon your geolocation in the world yeah def definitely not jealous uh, anyway, anyway um, <laughs> other things. Uh, the remaining cost is 112, which is other random things. That's literally what I put on this list. All other random things. <laughs> which we suspect is mainly deliveries. Yeah, um, so delivery costs and then bits where we got a receipt from B&Q for 12.94 and went, what do we buy? I don't, what's know. It? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, uh, by the way, deliveries are a huge hidden cost in a van build. Um, it kept kind of tripping us up whenever throughout the two years we, you know, go and order it and you go to the checkout and it's like £12 for them to deliver stuff because some, some of the things are delivered on trucks. <laughs> yeah. And but mind what? you, mind you, be prepared. If they're delivering something in a truck um, and you're doing your van build uh, mm. in your residential area streets, be prepared for a gigantic, huge motorway truck to squeeze itself in into your clothes to deliver your aluminium or whatever yeah. you ordered. Um, that was terrifying. 
Yeah. It literally parked up next to the window. I'm like, hmm. The final total cost uh, comes up to £13,693 for the van build itself yep. without the van, which is fairly on budget. Yeah, I mean, we were at the very beginning of the van build. We said 10000 for the van, 10000 to build it. So a total budget of twenty thousand pounds, and if you include the cost of building the van and buying the van in the first place, it comes to twenty one thousand seven hundred and ninety three pounds. Which for a house, is pretty good going. Yeah, not bad. So, house that works completely off grid. So, yep. can't <laughs> complain. There's plenty of things that we would like to do better. Um, you know, for the next van build or to tweak this one. Uh, but for most of it, it's worked out as planned pre pre pretty well so we're very happy with it um mm -hmm. i know this is kind of a it's a healthy sort of a van build budget it's not like yeah it's not a budget build but it's not an excessive build yeah um, you we you could probably convert a van for half this cost like half the cost mm -hmm. of the van half the cost to convert it you can easily spend double both yeah. on buying the van and on converting it but obviously with the prices of vans being so expensive you if you won't try to match what we spend then you'll be getting a van that's significantly probably more miles it might be like a very well looked after ambulance with <laughs> three hundred thousand miles on it uh which might be fine yeah i don't know uh <laughs> never done it obviously this cost also does not include any labor cost because we treat the labor cost as free because we were the ones who built it mm -hmm. and we also had to research how to do everything in the first place yeah. which also is technically a cost that's invisible in this number yeah. so if if you were to go hire a professional to do your van depending on the type of van you do but let's say you do a long wheelbase full-time sort of setup i it, would say add 10 15 thousand pounds onto that cost. easily like uh, most likely if they're charging you 30k to do a our style van build that's probably a really great deal 30k like, meaning the materials plus the labor yes not the van itself yeah okay um, because it just you have to pay for the person's time as well um, so yeah so yeah that's pretty much everything about our van all in one video cost wise yep that's it we have no money now yeah fancy going on the road trip sounds good excellent see you there